Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley. And wow, we got an absolutely wonderful show coming your way today. As we mentioned earlier, uh, May is Mental Health Month. And it's, uh, it's so much information that needs to be provided to uh, our listeners, our viewers, our world, how it relates to mental health and some of the things that we could do uh, to get a better understanding of and also, you know, just stay in our zone. You know, so uh, I'm excited about the show today. And uh, but before we, we get started, I want to bring the, the radio portion of it in and lock the radio and television uh, all together. So, hey, Todd, let's do it. It's Your Life is sponsored by James J.C. Cooley. Life is a series of circles and cycles, phases and stages. These are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. James is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the James Cooley Foundation. James is here to equip you to strive for greatness and to overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, Here's the host of It's Your Life, James Cooley. Hello, welcome to It's Your Life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley. And I tell you, we got an absolutely fantastic show coming your way today. Uh, whether you're listening to it on the radio, podcast, TV, watching on television, or over 25 other live streaming uh, um, platforms, including Transverse Television, the newest member of our family. Uh, we just want to say welcome. And uh, we got such a wonderful topic that we need to talk about today uh, that uh, I believe that awareness needs to be made, made uh, to everybody, the world. And what we're talking about is May is, is Mental Health Month. And mental health is not all about, you know, people having breakdowns and this and that. It's sometimes about having an understanding of what we need to do in order to help ourselves so we can help others uh so we can spread the love so uh i'm excited about today's show what about you michelle what about you dr michelle denise cooley how are you doing today i'm doing good yes may is mental health awareness month and you know it's about making the public aware of the issues when it comes to people's mental health and we have a guest today. He's just an honorary guest. He's going to be talking about, you know, what exactly the mental health issues are and the myths surrounding mental health and how people need to do self-care, seek help regarding this. I mean, mental health is, is definitely an issue. So um, we definitely need to address that. Wow. Yeah, and yes, we need to address that and awareness. You did bring up that one. That is, is what it's all about. And we got such an absolutely fantastic guest. And our viewers out there, whether you're watching, just like I said, whether you watch on television, live streaming, YouTube, whatever that is, if you want to be part of this conversation or eat on the radio, you can pick up the phone down 1 866 But Cheryl, I want to get started. Can you please introduce the title of the show? the purpose of the show, and introduce our absolutely wonderful, wonderful guest. Yes, the title of today's show is Mind Matters, Prioritizing Mental Health in Today's World. And we're having a discussion with Dr. Michael Mantell. He's a cognitive behavioral coach, keynote speaker, author, and advisor. We're going to talk about the prevalence of mental health issues and the stigma surrounding mental health and how mental health does impact our daily lives and the importance of seeking self-care and help. So Dr. Michael Mantell, again, he has for nearly 50 years, he's been helping people of all ages and backgrounds to serve themselves less and create lasting positive change with his compassion-based, rational, emotive behavior coaching methods. He earned his PhD at the University of Pennsylvania after completing his master's degree in clinical psychology at Hanneman Medical College. 
He is a member of the Science Advisory Council of the International Council on Active Aging, a longtime member of SAG after since 1981 through which he brought psychology to the public for decades in broadcast and print media, including Good Morning America, Oprah, Link, Larry King, Men's Health, Women's Health, and many more. Dr. Mantel, he has led three-day intensive programs for the American Society of Hematology on Physician Wellness and Burnout and presents a twice-monthly Optimal Living series for the same organization. To date, and he has written over nearly 80 columns for Ariana Huffington's Thrive Global on Emotional Education through COVID-19. He's written four books and counting, I'm sure. So we we're bringing back to the show Dr. Michael Mantel, who will be discussing May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Thank you. Hey. Welcome back to the show, Doc. How are you doing? How are you doing, my friend? Well, how could how could one be doing when he's on the show with such two illuminative people? Uh, you and Dr. Uh, Michelle Denise Cooley are just the best of the best. And whenever I'm on the show, my wife tells me my mental health improves. So this is great. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely fantastic, Doc. You know, we love having you on the show because you always bring, I mean, I, when we say you bring it, you bring it. Thank Whatever you. topic we're talking about, it's, uh, you are an expert in all of these things, and you break it down and you educate uh, us, uh, me as a host and Michelle, also our listeners uh, in every facet of what we're talking about. And just like we mentioned, this month is mental health, mental health awareness. awareness. Uh, can you tell um, our viewers and our listeners the significance of this? Absolutely. Mental Health Awareness Month began the year that I was born. And I and I just find that to amazingly coincidental. I don't believe in coincidences, but it began in 1949. And it has been never been more pertinent than now to recognize the ways that mental health plays in our overall well-being, in our society. Whether or not someone suffers from a mental health issue or not, Mental Health Awareness Month allows us to recognize the ways that mental illness impacts our lives. Whether we have the problem or our next door neighbor or family, friend, friend, worker, um, but it, it helps us in understand the impact that mental health conditions can have on our lives. It educates people about the available services, which we need to be talking about. And it highlights ways for us to be advocates for emotional well-being. Um, it, we, it, we can look at what Mental Health Awareness Month brings to help reduce stigma, which we'll be talking about, and to frankly do some fundraising and some ways to step in and help uh, empower people who are in this field um, and bring innovative, creative ways to mental health renaissance, to ways to create new, new pathways to help young people in particular and people from all backgrounds. So Mental Health Awareness Month is a critically important month, and uh, I'm glad we're here to talk about it. Wow. You know, so a doc uh, is mental health. Do you consider mental health a crisis, major crisis? If so, why? It is definitely a crisis. It's a pandemic. And in many ways, mental health crisis is a bigger crisis than many other things we label as crises. The fact is that um, today, one in four or five, depending on whose data you're looking at, have some kind of a mental health condition, a mental health or mental illness. Uh, the data says that one in 20 or so have a serious mental health issue. The National um, uh, Institute of Mental Health, NIMH, tells us that there are basically two broad categories that are affecting society. One is what we call AMI, any mental uh, illness, AMI, any mental, any mental illness or any mental condition. And that's defined as a mental, behavioral or emotional disorder uh, that varies from no impairment 
to mild impairment to even the more severe impairment. And then we have serious mental illness. And those are things like schizophrenia and depression, suicidal depression in particular, uh, bipolar disorder, uh, the eating disorders. And so we have to look at this range and say, how is this impacting society? If you look at the violence we have, the rage we have, the suicidal rates that are skyrocketing for young people, especially for people of, of different racial and economic backgrounds. You bet this is a crisis and one we better pay attention to. You know, so, uh, Doc, you mentioned uh, it's a crisis. Uh, got about a minute before the break. Uh, can anybody, <laughs> I'm talking about you know, a lot of people, well, I'm a doctor and I'm a lawyer. I, there's no way that I, that I could have uh, be suffering from mental illness. What are your thoughts on that? Anybody can have a mental illness. Well, let's put it this way. I know we got a minute before break, but we talk about health. Everybody can have health, but there are people who have illness. Everybody can have mental health, and there can be people who have mental illness. So when you realize that in 2021, there were an estimated almost 60 million people age 18 or older in the United States who had any mental illness, about more than 20% of the country, um, yeah, anyone can have it. It's not reserved for those who have uh, you know, genetic disorders or impoverishment. Anyone can have it. Look to the left or right on the freeway, and one out of five will have some kind of a mental disorder. I want to pick it up from there when we get back from the break because uh, this is such a amazing, amazing topic to talk about, and we need to bring awareness. And I tell you, wherever you're watching this at, if you want to be part of this conversation, just go to the comments or to pick up the phone. Dial one 577 2473 Yes, your life. We'll be back with more Dr. Michael Mantiano shortly after the break. There's more stories of great <laughs>
obstacles, phases, and stages. These are your experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. Dr. James Cooley is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. Dr. Cooley is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, Dr. James Cooley. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And uh, just uh, as you see that uh, I, I, I got my main man, Dr. Michael Mantel, uh, here with us again today because uh, it's important that, uh, you know, everything that this man uh, does and everything that uh, you talk about is, is so inspiring, even when it doesn't sound like it. It's <laughs> inspiring because we get a chance to get educated. We get a chance to get an understanding of what's going on. And today, what we're talking about is, is a mental health awareness. Uh, that's not the title of the show, by the way. Uh, the title of the show is The Minds Matter, Prioritizing Mental Health in Your Today's World. You have to prioritize those things and get a better understanding. So if you want to be part of the conversation, pick up the phone, one 577 2473 or go to your comments, ask any question that you might have. And I promise you we'll get you an answer. Doc, I want to pick it back up from where we left off at, where my question was, uh, most people think just because you're in a certain profession, or just because you got a, a certain amount of money or status that uh, mental health is, I can't get it. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Absolutely. Let's talk about, let's just talk a little bit about mental health. Uh, when we use clear shared language, to talk about our states of emotional well-being, we begin to understand that this can affect anyone at any time, okay? No one is exempt. I tell myself that every single day. Michael, you're not special. You're not exempt. And so you got to work at it. And by looking at the right language, we can begin to help reduce stigma. So let me give you a pyramid picture. Paint this in your mind. You'll understand what we're talking about here. On the bottom of the pyra pyramid, we have no distress, no problem, no disorder. Everything is going well. We're enjoying our daily lives. Just like we are, we three of us are on the air now, Michelle, you, JC, and myself, uh, and of course the folks at KCBQ. We're just doing, everything's going fine. Uh, no problems with uh, the internet. Please, goodness God, well, let's hope so. Everything's fine. One up, mental distress. The common, normal, expected responses to the stress of everyday life. If something were to happen, you get a flat tire or the internet goes down in the middle of this broadcast or you get rejected from a job, something like that. Um, yeah, that's normal, common mental distress. We have that. Then next level up, mental health problems. These are larger life challenges, divorce, serious diagnoses, uh, things that require our resilience skills, support from other people, uh, resources that we have to rely on. And then the top level, the smallest number, again, that one out of four or five people, mental disorder or illness, a clinically diagnosed illness that requires what we call evidence-based treatment from trained professionals. So we go from this this, you know, this is not a continuum, by the way. We don't progress from one level of the pyramid to the other. We can even experience these states simultaneously. How are things going? Maybe it's going pretty well, but, you know, I just got, just got some bad news for my job today. But it's going pretty well. So we, we can see how we can live through this. But this is this is going to affect all of us. Wow. Do you believe that, um, well, everyone's different and people who are suffering from mental health issues, it shows in different ways. Um, I think there's like myths out there that if someone's suffering from mental health issues, they're loud or they're out of control with their behavior. But sometimes people suffer in silence. And that is, um, that that's something that has, has been addressed. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's a brilliant question, as, of course, you would ask, Dr. Cooley. <laughs> but let's talk about um, how to understand when someone is suffering, suffering in silence or 
suffering publicly, do we know how to pay attention to the warning signs of emotional distress? There are plenty for us to pay attention to. Feeling sad or withdrawn for more than a couple of weeks. A friend of yours just is not who he or she is. They don't respond. They're not coming out on the weekends. It's been a couple of weeks. They're trying to harm themselves. You notice that they got a scratch or they're covering up something or they're talking in very dismal ways. The severe out of control behavior, risk taking behavior that they don't ordinarily engage in. Suddenly overwhelming fear or no reason reacting sometimes with a racing heart or physical discomfort. Even significant weight gain or loss can be some of the early signs. What about people who, I mean, on the more extreme side, see things or hear things. They're just not rational. Excessive use of alcohol or drugs. Drastic changes in their mood. Extreme difficulty concentrating or sitting still. Uh, these are some of the indications that there's more going on here than they may be even aware of. So we need to pay attention. We need to be alert. We need to be good responders to our friends, family, and neighbors. And, you know, sometimes, um, and I think people mean well, if someone is, quote, unquote, they consider going through a rough patch or maybe they, they say, oh, take a vacation or, you know, get a massage. But, you know, those things are temporary fixes. They don't fix the root of the problem. So why is it important for people to seek help instead of doing a temporary fix? Well, the fact is that um, let's, let's use physical health as the metaphor. If someone has a chronic cough, um, and they may even be like coughing up blood or something like that, and they think they're going to take a cough drop. Or they, they read somewhere that if they drink orange juice or something, that's going to help. No, it doesn't. You, you've got a serious problem. And you better get to a physician uh, who's competent in this specific area. We're talking about life-threatening, life-impacting illness, just like life-impacting physical illness. Again, Remember, one out of four or five, but that means that four or so out of five, four out of five or so, three out of four, um, don't have this serious mental illness, but they may have the other kind of distress. And so we all can benefit from turning to someone. If it's serious, you want to live as well as you can. And if it's just upsetting and you're feeling miserable, we can teach you how to un-upset yourself as well. I hope that answers your question. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, you know, Dr. Mantel, and we talked about this before the show, you know, there's so many people that have grown up in different environments and families, and there are families who do not believe in seeking help, uh, especially when it comes to the males. Um, they see the male has to be strong, a leader, or they'll mention, okay, well, I'm here. You can talk to me. I'm your dad. I'm your brother, but that is not a professional. So for those who are listening and they feel the stigma of going to seek help, not only by their families, but by society in general, what would you say to them? Well, let me go back to 1979, 1980. I just became the chief psychologist for the San Diego Police Department. And a lot of people thought psychological services for law enforcement, particularly men, right? Who is going to come to talk to you? Well, the first year, we had a profound double-digit number of people who came in to get some coaching, counseling, and even therapy. Why? because we made it acceptable. Now, women have a significantly higher frequency of depression and anxiety in adulthood. Men have a, a, a larger prevalence, if you will, of substance abuse and disorders uh, of antisocial behavior. And as you say, 
women are more light, more comfortable talking about their issues than men. Men consult mental health experts much less frequently. And so we have to do what we can to reach out and make it acceptable, make it comfortable, and help people feel welcome of whatever gender it may be. Although there's no variation in the overall incidence of psychopathology between men and women, they have different symptoms. Women um, uh, internalize, men externalize. And there's lots of theories about why that is, but I think it's important to understand that um, it's not just, you can't just pat a guy in the back and say, it's okay to talk about it. We have to understand that it's not easy. We were taught not to, that we think it means that we're weak. We have to help people retrain their thinking. It's a sign of strength. The last point I want to make about this is this. If you look carefully at many people in TED Talks, in the books that are coming out, in all the posts and social media, many, many people, men in particular, start with, I want to talk about a difficulty I had in my childhood. And they go on to how they overcame it. And thank goodness, more and more people are seeing that vulnerability is a sign of strength. JC, I, you're, you're, I can't hear you, JC. There you go. That's, that's, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right, Doc. Uh, I know we got the break coming up in 40 seconds, but uh, when we get back, I want to pick it up with uh, uh, something that you said, a weakness. Uh, because a lot of people will say, okay, you got mental health problem because you got a character problem or you weak. Uh, I want to talk about that when we get back. I tell you, if you want to be part of the conversation, all you have to do is just go to the comments, uh, ask uh, Dr. Mantel any question you like, or pick up the phone and, and hit Todd up at the radio station, KCBQ, one 2473 It's your life. We'll be back shortly after the break. There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome adversity coming up on It's Your Life with James Cooley. Noah Dingley here, producer of The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. These are your 
experiences that teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. Dr. James Cooley is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. Dr. Cooley is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, Dr. James Cooley. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. And my, as you know, uh, my magnificent, uh, my friend, uh, uh, my uh, guest uh, here, Dr. Michael Mantel, is always bringing it, always educating us, and always bringing awareness to us uh, about a lot of different issues. Today, we're talking about uh, uh, mental health. Uh, we're talking about uh, 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 my matters, prioritizing mental health in today's life. And so, hey, Doc, uh, can you tell our viewers and listeners uh, why you chose that topic uh, for our discussion today? Well, as you know, that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And um, it began in 1949, the year I was born. Uh, my whole life has been dedicated to, uh, I guess, helping other people in one way or another particularly, obviously, my professional life. And I believe that ultimately mind does matter. A mind over matter, we say all the time. And uh, the, uh, my last book is called The Link is What You Think. Uh, the mind and the body are not separate. You cannot find it anywhere separate other than textbooks. So mind matters. That's why I called it that. And the reason we're devoting ourselves to mental well-being, emotional well-being, is because the month May is mental, oh, mental health awareness month. As you see, our great friend Joshua Goldsmith got a question for you. Can you speak to the stigmas of mental health illness that exists in society today, and the progress, if any, in society? Well, that's a great question from another great guest and good friend of yours, uh, oh, yeah. ours, really, uh, Josh. It's a great question. Stigma of mental illness. Uh, refers to the negative attitudes, the beliefs, the stereotypes that people hold towards people with mental health conditions. And it can lead to discrimination, social exclusion, limited opportunities for those who have mental health problems and conditions and can worsen their condition and delay their recovery. Why? Why do we have this stigma? One reason is that many people still see mental illness as a personal weakness. We, uh, that uh, J JC spoke about earlier, or a character flaw, rather than as a legitimate medical condition. Um, this misconception could lead to blaming people for their condition, and then we see them as less competent, less able. Uh, we, we think of them as handicapped. Uh, they're not as capable as other people. Another reason for stigma that I've seen is, uh, is a lack of understanding about the causes of mental illness. Many people believe that mental illness is caused by a lack of willpower, nonsense. It's a failing, nonsense. Um, rather than it, that being a biologic, genetic, or environmental set of factors. Now granted, we can make ourselves feel miserable. We can make ourselves upset. But remember the pyramid that I began with. The pyramid says, Mental illness is up here. Most of us focus down here, where day to day we upset ourselves about events, about the way other people treat us. That's different. Stigma prevents people from getting help, which we don't want. We want people to get help. And so they may fear being judged, uh, ridiculed, uh, discriminated against, and they often are. So to combat the stigma of mental illness, it's important that we do shows like this where we educate the public about mental health and promote empathy and understanding and advocate for policies that support uh, uh, mental health and wellness. It's essential to provide access, literal access, to quality mental health care from kindergarten all the way on up. I hope, Josh, that that answers some of the questions you had about stigma. A great question and important element in this topic. Dr. Mantel, for some of the people out there, as you, you mentioned it, then they are afraid to step forward because of the stigmas that are attached to a lot of things. Uh, if they wanted to go out and 
reach out to support groups or et cetera, or what, what advice would you give them or what support groups or what information would be tailored? Well, I first tell them if they have a physician, a, a primary care physician, speak with a comp primary care physician first. If you don't, you can always go to an urgent care, anywhere from one of the CVS things or Target or anywhere it may be. If you don't want to do that, you can contact County Mental Health. Um, many, thankfully, many workplaces today have chief wellness officers. So you can look in your workplace, talk to someone in the school, talk to a neighbor. If you're concerned about suicide, dial 988 on your phone. There are lots of ways to reach out. Now, many people say, yeah, I tried all those, but it doesn't help. You know what? Contact me. Contact me, Dr. Mantell at me.com. I'll get you focused into the right place. Dr. Mantell, when people talk about mental health, they're thinking adults. But don't our don't children suffer from mental health issues as well? Absolutely. I mean, and the number is skyrocketing. Um, early intervention is important. And by say early inter intervention, intervention, I don't mean uh, getting uh, p adults as soon as they start to complain about a problem. I mean, like in children children of divorce, children who have learning difficulties, kids who are not socializing in the playground, if there is a playground anymore, uh, with, with other kids in school. Uh, you see someone going to church or synagogue and the kids aren't, are, are not talking to them. Or you have kids in social media, a very dangerous thing today. And American Psychological Association and other organizations are beginning to point to the fact that we have to protect kids from that. So, yeah, I think that we have to be very concerned about children. And I scream about the fact that from kindergarten on, we need to be teaching children how to think healthier, not wait until they get into high school or college is now bragging about the fact that we have we, we, we have professors and we're arming them with the early warning signs. No, no, no. Let's get these kids from kindergarten, preschool onward. You know, um, mental health, it not only affects someone's, um, of course, uh, mind, but also physical. And you were just talking about children, you know, the teenagers, um, it can come in the form of consequence is eating disorder or bullying. Uh, sometimes people don't think that bullying it can come from an issue of suffering from mental health, but, you know, they're, they're I've read where that is probably not the case. Um, so mental health, that word has just been dropped a lot, especially with um, school shootings, just um, just mass shootings, period. Oh, if this wouldn't happen if it wasn't the mental, they got the mental health issues, you know, blah, blah, blah. People say, oh, it's guns. People say it's mental health. I mean, it could be so many things. So what are your thoughts about just, the things I just mentioned. I know it was a lot. That's okay. Now let's talk about uh, five things. One, mental health issues affect our emotional well-being. They can cause intense emotions such as sadness, anxiety, uh, anger, which affects our ability to enjoy life. Physical health, mental health conditions do affect our physical well-being. Fatigue, insomnia, um, a change of appetite, weight, uh, our ability to be active work and productivity. We can't work if we're having mental health concerns. Our relationships suffer. Our daily activities suffer. We need to think about how we talk about mental health. I want to give you a, a couple of examples, if I can. A little bit changing the subject, but I want to be sure we get this in. Language matters, meaning the language we use to describe mental health conditions definitely has an impact on the stigma. For example, don't use the term mentally ill person or schizophrenic person. We don't say a fat person. We use, pers we use people first language, a person with a mental illness, a person with depression, a person with obesity. Put the person first. Person first language allows individuals with mental illness 
to be seen as people rather than a diagnosis. That makes sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Let me give you another one. Typical behavior. Avoid using normal or regular behavior. Let's use typical behavior. There's no such thing as normal or regular behavior. I don't even know what that means. What is normal for you may not be normal for me. Typical behavior that is developmentally appropriate or appropriate based on a diagnosis makes sense. So let's let's be less judgmental and not talk about normal or a regular behavior. Let's talk about what is typical behavior. You want to know another one? Suicide. Someone committed suicide. Whoops. That's serious. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened there. Someone committed suicide. We don't say that anymore. We say he died or she died by suicide. When talking about suicide, we stay away from committed suicide as well as a successful or unsuccessful suicide attempt. It's a common and harmful idea that those who die uh, by suicide commit something wrong, a crime, a sin. No, they died by suicide. They made a suicide attempt or they were a suicide survivor. And then lastly, I am so OCD. Oh, my God. I am, the weather is being so bipolar. We don't talk about those terms. I like things to be done a certain way. Um, my day was so psychotic. No, my day was hectic. That's the way we talk about that. Um, and, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bad today. I'm going to have dessert. What? That's nothing to do with being bad. I feel like dessert. Why am I making food a moral value? So if we begin to change the way we talk about these things, I think we can go far in reducing the stigma that Josh brought up earlier. Wow. You know, hey, Doc, uh, a lot of things you, you, you're bringing up is so true. And I believe that we, we need to start teaching that. Uh, and that needs to be added in, in, in a lot of things. I teach diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, that needs to be added in there as well. And uh, just never look, looked at it that way until you just said it right now. And uh, that is great. We're going to take a station break. But we're going to come back. And we're going to have some more of Dr. Michael Mantel. And if you want to be part of the conversation out here, do it. pick up the phone, one 577 2473 or go to the comments. Ask any question that you might have. I promise you, we'll get you an answer. Yes. Your life. I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley. We'll be back shortly after the break. There's more stories of greatness to help you overcome adversity coming up on It's Your Life with James Cooley. The J.C. Cooley Foundation is a nonprofit organization that was started in... Really get a chance to know who you are. And once you know who you are, you truly know who you are, love who you are. Love who you are. Your masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me some me. That's what I'm talking about. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate. Commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. In everything that you do.
Life is a series of circles and cycles, phrases and stages. These experiences teach you the lessons of life. You can either ignore them or embrace them. Welcome to It's Your Life with James Cooley. James is a motivational speaker, author, military veteran, and founder of the J.C. Cooley Foundation. James is here to equip you to strive for greatness and overcome adversity. It's time to get you equipped today for the challenges of tomorrow. Now, here's the host of It's Your Life, James Cooley. James Cooley. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life, and uh, um, you know, just a little excited about the last segment, especially toward the end uh, when uh, Doc, when you was talking about the, the languages, a person that's a person that opposed to just putting it out there, and and that would that could drive anybody uh, a little backwards if that make any sense. Uh, because uh, you're not really giving them that personal or whatever that might mean. You know, so uh, I want to pick it back up from there because I, I think that the language, language is so important and that has such an impact on us as human beings. And a lot of people don't know, they, they, they can't even fathom, they can't even see it, uh, that uh, their language once you see it, you can't take it back. Plus, it's hurt you sometimes. Can you pick it up? Absolutely. I think that um, we've talked about a lot of things here. I want to be sure we, we talk a little bit about what people can do if they are experiencing difficulties, even if they're in coaching or counseling or therapy of some kind. There's a lot of things we can be doing to uh, as a community. For example, we need to, as Michelle said, we need to provide kids with stable, nurturing, and protective environments, we are not doing a good enough job. We need to do a better job. How can we, how can leaders of a community possibly, possibly think they're helping our community if we're not giving kids protection, nurturance, and stability? Let's empower and lift up people who are marginalized or discriminated against because trauma impacts our emotional well being. And trauma, exclusion, discrimination, uh, untreated health, that affects our emotional well-being. Offering mental health interventions and programs across the board, across the board, we have to provide treatment for mental illness and accessible treatment. That means a person doesn't know how to get there. Let's get them to the office or let's get them on the phone or let's get them on the Zoom, whatever it might be. We have to do that. But if you, and, and I'm just going to go on a little bit further here. If you are, want to do something for your own well being, if you want to do something for your own well being, I want you to get outside, no matter what the weather is. And here in Southern San Diego and Southern California, the weather's beautiful. Go for a walk, get physical activity. I don't care if it's just 10 minutes for walking to the corner and back. What it does to your chemistry is remarkable. It does wonders. And then I want you to look at your about your diet. How are you eating? That's not always easy. I know this is not easy, but it, but we have to start somewhere. So if you say, you know what, I'm not going to have that extra cupcake right now. I'm going to instead have something that's a little healthier. I'm going to have some strawberries. I can't afford strawberries. Well, maybe I can afford some grapes. I don't know, something, pumpkin seeds. And then what about relaxation? I can't relax. There's too much noise around me. Let's get real, Doc. I am real. I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. I get it. It's like, you know, I'm laying in a hammock on the beach. <laughs> you know, oh, I'm laying in the hammock in the beach in my multi-million. Let's get real here. But there's lots of ways you can relax and be social. One of the keys of people who live long and joyous lives is they're connected. I don't care if it's just say hello to somebody at the coffee shop. Hold the door and smile. That'll help. Wow. Those are really good ideas and good suggestions and recommendations, Dr. Mantel. I want to talk about family and friends and people who are well-intentioned. Um, everyone has different ways of 
you know, decompressing, self-care, et cetera. And even though family and friends may be well-intentioned, if somebody is going through mental health challenges, what are some of the things they should not do um, to, uh, to their loved ones if they feel that they're experiencing some type of mental health challenge? Uh, can you give us a couple of examples? Yeah, I'll tell you a, a real life one. Uh, a client of mine wrote to me last night that um, her husband, who is in medicine, told her she has depression, told her, stop that. Stop that. That you think is going to help somebody? No. Ask more, tell less. Meaning, how can I help you? At, at the very least, just say to somebody, I'd like to be of, I'd like to be of more help. Wait a minute. What's going on here? There we are. I'd like to be of more help, um, but I'm not sure what to do. The best I can do is for you to know that I'm here with you. What can I do to be of help? I'm here with you. Um, I can offer to go for a walk with you. I can offer to, um, you know, call the doctor if you want. I can uh, help bring some food to you. Uh, but ultimately, I'm sitting here with you is exceptionally helpful. Telling people, stop it. There's nothing wrong with you. What's, what is wrong with you? Uh, you know that that doesn't help, but people do those things because we're frustrated and we care. Yes, exactly. And especially when the other person doesn't understand or maybe it's overwhelming for them and they don't know how to deal with it. But sometimes people just want to have your ear. They just want you to listen to them, not try to solve the things. But, you know, and just maybe the recommendation is maybe you need to talk to somebody, you know, because as well-intentioned as family, friends, loved ones are, we're not trained in this. I mean, some are, but you would never go to your your, your right. family or friends for for mental health counseling, but um, but I would, but I, I also would be careful about telling somebody you ought to talk to somebody, you ought okay. to see someone. I would be very careful about that because someone can take offense at that. Oh, you think I'm crazy? Oh, you think I need a shrink? Oh, you think I'm not? No, no. So I would just say, you know, there's so many options today for people who are having difficulties. I've had them. We've all had them. And I have found that when I talk to somebody, it helps. What do you think? Again, ask the question. Don't tell somebody, you must be thinking that, uh, you know, that they're out to get you. No. What are you thinking about their behavior? What are you thinking that makes you feel this way? What do you, what do you believe would help you? Ask questions. That's the key. The less you tell, the better off you are. Wow. Thought we're down to about the last three minutes of the show. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that if we have folks out there that need your help, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, Thank you very service? much. I appreciate that. If people want to be in touch with me, they can write to me at drmantel, Dr. Mantel, at me, M-E, dot com. I do lots of coaching individually, uh, couples, families, lots of individual work, executive coaching, um, and... Uh, I do a lot of it on Zoom, so it's all around the country, all around the world, actually. I have clients who literally all around the world and be happy to talk with people about how to help them begin to unupset themselves, yeah. unmiserabilize themselves, and learn to think differently. If it's a serious mental illness, we need to help people find a way to get that level of professional help. Um, I don't do therapy. I do coaching. So I'm working with a the group of people are having more everyday distress than serious mental illness. Hey, Doc, uh, uh, what are a few takeaways that uh, you want our, our viewers and our listeners to get from this great, great discussion? Well, I think, number one, you'd be surprised how much health, how much healthier you feel when you're moving. Physical activity is important. Eating well listening to music, art, music, creativity, 
spirituality. I can't emphasize this enough. I'm not talking about religion necessarily, but spirituality, the idea of having faith, knowing that, that I can hold on, pain ends. I believe in something bigger than me. I believe that when bad things are happening, I don't see problems, I see opportunities. Uh, volunteering, give more to other people. Friendships and support, boy, that is the best medicine. Being outdoors, nature, the research tells us, like all these things I'm mentioning, that this really helps. Meditation and contemplation. Just sit quietly. Don't try and change things. Accept what is in front of your mind. These are methods that people can use to begin to elevate themselves. It's not going to cure schizophrenia. It's not going to cure necessarily uh, clinical severe depression where people are not getting out of bed. But boy, will it help a great deal in lifting spirits and moving people in the right direction. Real quickly, Doc. Um, so people that are out there, they're saying, okay, vitamins and medicine and all this uh, can help stimulate them. What is some uh, natural herbs that you would recommend if that, no. that's what people yeah. So I would stay, whoops, let me get back. There you are. I would, uh, I'm, I'm not someone who likes to recommend herbs or medication. I know that more and more people are talking about ketamine treatment today. There's a big, big voice of people who are saying that psychiatric medications, antidepressants and anti-anxieties are being called into question. The theory underlying them is being called into question. So I, I just stay away from that. My focus is on helping people think about their lives in healthier terms. Are there supplements and medications? Absolutely. Check with your physician for guidance on that. Wow. Hey, Doc, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. You know that you got an open invitation anytime. You know, so I, I want to thank you again for taking the time to come talk about this extremely uh, useful topic that everyone needs to know about. You know, also, I, I want to thank uh, 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 Todd Pirate KCBQ, my a producer at the radio station. They do a, a terrific job. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Michelle Cooley for putting together another fantastic show. But most importantly, I'd like to thank our listeners and viewers for tuning in to the James Cooley Show. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. Always dream big, think big, and be big at everything you do. Yes, your life will see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us for The James Cooley Show. It's your life. To learn more about Dr. James Cooley, 